everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday and happy Halloween. Boo. We're expecting about 350 kids tonight. So it will definitely be exciting around here. I hear about 50 of them out there right now, just screaming and playing. Can you hear them? <laughs> okay, well, we hope you'll be enjoying the day with all the Halloween trick-or-treaters, mm -hmm. pumpkins, witches. Sugar up. That's right. <laughs> Get all jazzed. We bought, I bought this huge thing of candy, and I had one little bitty Milky Way thing, and it was so waxy. Oh, I don't know how people eat that stuff. Oh, I mean, that's because you haven't been eating it every single day in large amounts, and you lose your tolerance ah, for the wax. Embrace yeah, the wax. Yeah. <laughs> it is nasty. Okay, we received serial number eight from the printer, and it will be in stores in a couple of weeks. This guy right here. Two more issues to go. Yeah. I'm kind of sad to see Zoe go. I know. She's become one of my favorite characters. She's like a part of the family now. Yeah. Yeah. But I also can't wait to see what you do next. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll so figure it out. I have been out of town. I went to Chicago to see the Banksy exhibit, which was so much fun. It was cold and wet, but it was still a lot of fun. So I don't have any other um, studio news today. So are you ready to get on the hot seat? Sure, absolutely. Okay, I've got one question. Oh, this is going to be a doozy. Then. Oh no, you what? I, I never mind. I do have two questions. You have two questions. Okay. Yeah. So this first one is a little uh, involved. So listen carefully. Okay. <laughs> it's from Yen Arts, and he says, "I remember Mr. Moore talk about." Before comics, he used to be a cartoonist, and that he also talked about the transition to comics. When I think of transitioning from cartoons to comics, it seems like a seems more an extension to cartooning and illustration. I currently am a student being trained as a fine arts artist, aka oil painting, which for my current work takes about a couple of months to complete one. Mm -hmm. I got the itch that I want to create slash comics slash graphic novels, but I look up. Mm, I don't know where to start as comics come from an imagination basis as and oil paintings. I want for my canvas to reflect reality as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I am reading through the How to Draw book, but your skill set and the one I am wearing are very different, if not completely. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions from what point to start? And do you have any good book suggestions? I'm in the second year of my five-year art course. The itch is only going to be bigger until I can until I can't anymore. Kind regards and have a nice Halloween. Thank you. Okay. That is a very involved question, but it's yeah. a very honest question. Um, I don't know what kind of fine art you are studying. Well, he said oil painting. Oil painting, but I mean, there's a, a lot of territory there. So um, I think, you know, there is a common uh, link between fine art and uh, illustrative illustration art. And that is those magazine painters, the illustrators of the 20th century, especially the early 20th century, late 19th, early 20th. These guys were excellent painters who began to illustrate scenes from stories. So you would get like Andrew Wyeth or Maxwell Parrish, and they would have a beautiful painting that could be in any museum on standoff alone piece. But it happened to be connected with a story, and you could see the story in the painting. So instead of capturing, say, a still life of a woman with a basket full of uh, onions or something, they're capturing a moment of fiction that may have a bit of adventure to it. That was, a that was I think, the cornerstone connection, the big connection between uh, you know, fine art and fictional art, where you're, you're illustrating scenes from fictions. Um, so you can look at those guys and use them as something you can relate to right now from the fine art field, and then see what direction they were pointing. A lot of those guys also did black and white pen art, and especially Wyeth and all those guys, um, Booth. These guys all also did pen and ink, and you can look at their painting and their pen and ink and see how they made the transfer from one discipline to the other. And they're, all of their pen and ink for the magazines of the early 20th century, all of that set up comic books. And, that, and there you go. That's your link. That's your front door 
to how uh, comic book illustration came about. So start there. And it's fun. That's beautiful stuff. Yeah. And it's a whole different set of names and artists that you don't find in museums, but they belong there. Okay. Well, um, I hope that answers his question. It's a good starting point. Okay, the next question is from Erica Murphy, and she says, will you all publish a book of just the cover art for Sip, Rachel Rising, Sip 25, Five Years, etc.? It is so gorgeous. Oh. We have had a lot of um, requests for that lately. Maybe we'll do something sooner rather than later with that. Okay, So, a book of covers. We have that. Let for... us know if you guys are really interested in that. If it's, you know, 20 people, we'll probably not do it. <laughs> <laughs> If it's 20 Coming people, from the publisher. if it's 20 people, we'll just invite you over to the house and let you look at them. Uh, but if it's more, we could do a book collecting the covers. And there is a Strangers it would be and a big, It would be a big uh, book yes, because you've got 109, probably 100, maybe 115 SIP covers because you have some mm -hmm. that had multiple covers. And then, um, you know, all the other You've got mm -hmm. 42 from Rachel Rice and 30 from Echo. It's getting close to 300 comments. Anyway, Erica, we are considering that. We'll see how things uh, progress and see if there really is a market for it. I'd I would love to have that book. Just a book of all the covers. It's harder and harder to print these days. Yes. Uh, so we really have to want to print it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you're printing, you've got to really want it because it's, I mean, it's a challenge right now. Uh, it's amazing that Robin has gotten the last few books accomplished. It really is. Okay, so what are you drawing today? Honey, it's Halloween. I know. And when people get in trouble do in Halloween... Do you like my costume? Yes, I do. <laughs> She's in her cute costume. Uh, I'm in my jammies. <laughs> when people get in trouble in a Halloween movie they, and they're in the kitchen, what's the first thing they grab? Knife, right? No, don't grab the knife. I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing the... Either the marinara sauce or the cake. <laughs> I want to go down eating. Yeah. Grab the spoon, and I'm going to show you uh, the power of the spoon in the uh, Halloween drawing that we're going to do together here. So, spoon. Okay, so now we're going to be frightened of the spoons? Yes, you will never look at spoons the same way again. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, well, so that's it for me. I hope you guys fly into November with all you've got. We've got two months left in the year. Let's give it hell. <laughs> I love that attitude. Yes, yeah. give it hell. Okay. All right, guys, meet me right here. Okay. Okay, today we're going to draw spoon. Spoon, spoon. <laughs> you know, everybody reaches for the knife in the kitchen, but we and we overlook the poor little spoon. So for Halloween, I thought I'd bring out the spoon and show all of its potential. <laughs> um, just for fun, uh, I did a light pencil drawing here of a couple of creepy people. And I'm hiding the one on the right, just kind of holding off the reveal as long as possible uh, so I can focus on this fella. And I'm just, as you can see, I just did a light pencil and I'm just kind of jamming with the pen and just doing uh, old-fashioned cartooning uh, fun stuff here. Um, everything from the drool to the ink line weights and that Mad Magazine belly button right there. <laughs> uh, it's just all... Uh, fun old cartooning cliche stuff um, and it's not really about accuracy on any of this it's about characters lampooning uh, characterization um, just kind of satire really um, it you don't know if you're drawing a comic book or an editorial cartoon or whatever but it's just fun you know it's funny I drew this guy with skinny pants uh, kind of you know skinny goth and then when I got time to inking it, I thought, you know what? He'd look even worse in baggy pants, dirty old brown baggy pants. So I'm trying to think of the creepy guy at the end of the street in the old house. And um, some nasty old sweater. He probably got that sweater in college back in the 50s. <laughs> He's been wearing it ever since. Okay, uh, looking around the corner now, it's time to draw a lamp. So I thought, you know, what's a good Halloween lamp? So I threw the old fashioned uh, veil over it like they used to back in the Victorian days. And now we need a lamp stand and a pull switch, which happens to be, oh, I can't really see. <laughs> uh, 
So let's see, we're making the stand on the lamp. Ribs. We're having ribs for dinner, babe. I don't know who has four ribs, but apparently that's all they need. That little critter. We need feet for the lamp. Claw feet. That's a furniture joke. <laughs> My first and last furniture joke. Okay, here we go. Here's who we're talking to. It's Pa and Ma playing with their spoons. So he has hair out his ears and she has hair on her chin. Those are also uh, old Mag Mag Mad Magazine stuff, you know, Wally Wood things. And she has this big beehive hair, and I thought, let's put a rat in there. When I was in school, we always heard about the lady with the beehive hairdo who had a, a black widow spider in her hair. That's an urban myth, I guess. Um, never heard one about a rat. I'm not sure she would know or care. What do we have in our hands, Grandma? A lot of spoons. So she's holding a basket of spoons. And I think she too is wearing um, the old Victorian dress that she probably wore back in the 1910. Got the long toe. I'm really just drawing every little gross body detail I can think of. Um, when you go for stuff like that, uh, you're not, you're, it's so, it's the opposite of drawing Strangers in Paradise, you know, where I'm trying to get all the little nuances to add up to beautiful or cute. And then in this one, you just kind of let yourself go and draw all the stuff that grosses you out. <laughs> it's a totally different way of working. Uh, I guess it's cathartic in a, in a way. Um, Cats don't gross me out, but I just thought there should be a cat. Because the cat is waiting for it, you know what. She's waiting for these two to knock off so she can eat them. And we have that old-fashioned furnace vent down there at the baseboards. And, oh dear, Rover got into the uh, air ducts again. Maybe he's been stuck in there for years. But he has a spoon, thank God. <laughs> Imagine a creepy house where the dog has been in the air vents for years. Spot. Let's call the dog Spot. I don't know what those are. I guess they're knitting needles. And a big picture of a spoon. Hanging on the old-fashioned nail like they did back in the Victorian days. Okay, they both said spoon and you can quote them on that. Okay, time to uh, put some personality into this. Now, what we have right now is a line drawing, but um, gosh, it needs some dark stuff in there, doesn't it? Because this is the dark holiday. So I'm going to go in there and black in what I can and give some contrast to the whole thing. It'll make it pop. Pop. So I'm just, uh, every time my hand disappears, I'm dipping it into the ink well on the right. I did it with the pen and now I'm doing it with the brush. So you can tell that the brush holds ink a lot longer than the pen. That's why you can go faster with a brush if you have the right drawing that, that you can do a brush on. It doesn't take long to get used to a brush. I think if you pick it up and um, if you just spend 20 minutes listening to somebody about it, the correct way to hold a brush and use it um, and start just start doing it, you could feel really comfortable with it within a couple of a month or two. Um, just like this, you know. Um, it doesn't take that long to get used to them. Don't be afraid of them. They're very, very useful tools. As opposed to doing everything with a felt pen or something. 
And when the ink uh, gets a little dry on there, they get that uh, gray mark that um, if they're not saturated with ink anymore, they just kind of, yeah, like that. The skid marks. <laughs> they make good skid marks when you get the ink. It's uh, almost gone on the brush. So I just added those in there for a little bit of texture and character. And I think uh, in order to really get the tones I want now, I'm going to do a pencil as if it was um, gray screen. You know, I don't have gray screen anymore. Uh, only Japan does. So I'm just going to use a pencil. A lot of people would use a gray marker here, you know, like Copic markers or something like that. Um, but look how much erasing I'm doing like that. I, I'd put that on there and immediately decide, oh, that was a terrible idea. And then I can erase it. That's the advantage of using a pencil over a Copic marker. And if you use like a number four pencil like I'm using right now, look at the range on it. Um, if you press lightly, you can get number two scale uh, I mean, number two, like tones. If you press hard, you got the number four, so it has a lot of range to it. Here's where you can bring out the drawing with the accenting on the lighting, like that. You'll notice I rarely ever do that, but I, I love it. I mean, I would do it more if I had a pencil, using pencil tones in my comic. It's not really the kind of thing I like doing with black, because then it's a Batman comic, you know? Uh, everything's black, no grays. Um, except for his costume, but I like black line drawings with gray tones, so not a lot of place for that in my comic, I guess. I guess I could use pencil, but then I would have to, maybe I'll try it on the next one, huh? Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I signed it, but I still decided it needed a couple of things, like it might help to have a border on there so you can see what you're supposed to be looking at. It really helps to frame it sometimes. And uh, clean up a few things so it'll make the contrast pop where I got a little sloppy. If I make the dog eyes white, they'll pop a little more out of the vent. And the side of her face that faces the lamp. I think that's it, guys. Spoon, spoon. <laughs> I want you to look at spoons differently from now on every Halloween, okay? You guys have a good one. See you next week.